Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in today's video, we're going to look at uh, tramming in the CNC mini mill. Before I get started, I want to say thank you. Uh, so many people have been uh, just amazingly supportive along the way. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I had back surgery uh, this summer, and. Uh, I am an army veteran, um, but uh, you know, and this was things that happened in the army many, many twenty some years ago, and then re-injured again a decade or so ago. But uh, um, finally, got to a point where I had to have it fixed. And you know, this community has been so great in uh, being supportive. I get checked on regularly. People send me notes. Um, I was invited to go to the uh, the Barzi Industrial uh, Summer Bash, which. Kills me that I can't be there, guys. I, I really wish I could, but I'm not cleared for travel yet. Um, I'm, I'm walking. That's an improvement, but uh, uh, there's no way I can make a five-hour flight from uh, North Carolina. So um, I hope everybody has fun there at the uh, at the extravaganza, and hopefully, I thought I saw something about a live stream, so maybe I'll get to see you guys anyways. Um, I also want to say thank you to all the new subscribers I've gotten. Uh, you guys have been great. Uh, I mean. The subscribers in general are so helpful. Um, this is truly a special community where people feel comfortable sharing information and sharing ideas. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of neat to, to be a part of that. And so I just wanted to say thank you again for all the, the, uh, the help I've gotten, um, all the suggestions that I've gotten, and uh, you know, the occasional opportunities I've had to help other people out. So uh, I do appreciate that. Now, on to the show. The mini mill. So, if you watched last week's episode, uh, and there should be a link up there, right? Uh, you saw that I got the CNC mill working, <laughs> working, right? Um, like I said, it was more like a compilation of uh, of what not to do, right? Um, all my blooper reel footage, but I got it going, and uh, it cut pretty well. I did okay for what I was trying to do. I mean, I was just doing some real light engraving. This was just proof of concept, uh, making sure that uh, I have absorbed enough knowledge at this point to run the thing. And uh, also that I've got things set up and that the machine's working right. In all honesty, I was more like a kid on Christmas than I was a machinist using, you know, precision tooling. Um, I hadn't trammed the mill. I hadn't cleaned it, serviced it. I threw some oil on it real quick. You know, wiped it down real quick. Threw some oil on it and said, "Let's do this. Go!" Right? Because I was so excited. And you know, that's not me, and that's not how I, I work. So, I spent a little bit of time today getting the the mill trammed in properly. Um, I do not have any special tooling to use for tramming. Uh, they make these tools that help you do that. Um, I don't own any, anything like that. But what I do have is a coaxial indicator with a long reach arm on it. And so that's what I use to do the tramming. Um, nothing terribly special here, guys. You know, it's basically take a measurement, zero it out, flip it to the other side, and then split the difference. It doesn't matter what the reading is, split the difference. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, you know, the, there's trig involved in all this kind of stuff if you're doing precise calculations. Suburban Tools, which I'll put a link up here, did a video recently on um, the proper use of these indicators, right? And the angles that you use and the length of the, the uh, indicator tips and the points, right? Well, those all make a difference in the trigonometry. So the reading on the dial, it won't make a difference, right? I, I, I did set it to zero just to, so it gave me something to work from, but it doesn't matter because really all you're working on is the difference between the left and right side, making sure that it's not tilted one way or the other. Um, the trigonometry is going to throw the, the value off. So unless you're at a one-to-one -one ratio, as you put a longer or shorter tip in, it's going to throw the ratio off, which means you're not going to get a direct read on the dial. Right? That's why also um, in the Suburban Tools video, he talks about making sure that you're reading things um, straight on and not down at angles, right? Because again, now you're getting into those you know, sine and cosine values and the lengths and the, the, your dial indicator isn't aware of any of that kind of thing. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be fancy tooling. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Get your mail trimmed if you haven't done it before. So let's take a look at what I'm going to use today. 
Um, simple coaxial indicator, right? So it allows it allows us to spin while keeping uh, your the uh, indicator facing you, right? Um, I got this on sale. It's an Enco part number. Uh, what does that look like? Six eight seven dash zero zero four six eight three nine seven. Um, yeah, four six eight three nine seven. It's an MHC centering indicator. Uh, you know, so keep an eye on Enco. From time to time, they have pretty good deals, and so I got that uh, a while back. You may have seen the video on that uh, a while ago. What's nice is it comes with a variety of arms. You have the indicating arms that you can use, both straight and curved. Right. So I've got this whole bag full of indicator arms. And um, so I used the longest one I had and the curved one. I brought it down as close as I could to flat, but you know, like I said, it doesn't really matter in this case, you're just splitting the difference. But that's what I used today, um, and it worked out pretty well. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video and hang on for the ride. Okay, so I've got us over at the mill, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see here, let's zoom in using my dial indicator to uh, get the, the mill trammed. And so we're reading zero. If I, I'll bring it around and show you the other side real quick. Okay. Oh, I did get a little movement. Okay, I started loosening the back and getting everything ready to go. And I, I've got some movement already. So let's re-zero this. Zero. You guys can see we're at zero. And I'm using my coaxial indicator because it's, it's got the best sweep range for me of all the tools that I have. So we'll come off. We'll check this side now. And I'm reading about, about two thousands. I don't know if you guys can see that. And remember, you know, um, I guess it was Suburban Tools did the video recently about the angles and um, you know, the trig basically that goes into the um, you know, the accuracy of these things and keep in mind I've got the longest reach uh, arm on here it's not going to be as accurate if I had or it's not going to be a direct reading so two thousandths doesn't mean that it's literally two thousandths off it's just telling me that it's off some amount and so what I'm looking to do is split that difference um, it is off in positive two thousandths, and as we raise this lever, it goes up, right? So it means it needs to come down two thousandths. This lever needs to come down. Well, in order for this to come down, this whole spindle angle has to tilt clockwise a little bit. So I've loosened. This is the one thing I don't like about this mill, or one of the things I don't like, but the, the, the worst part about it um, is actually in this, just getting it dialed in initially. Right, it's uh, it's got a um, it doesn't have a fixed column. It's got a rotating column, and that column. I mean, it's great if you're doing manual stuff and you need to get in at an angle, and you so you can set the angle and you can drill it you know, or mill it, you know, different angles and stuff like that. I'd rather move my workpiece than have to tram this thing in every time. As you can tell, because I hadn't trammed it in yet since doing the conversion or anything. So let's. Um, I got it loose. I'm just going to very lightly tap on this. Sorry guys, I don't know if you guys can even see what's happening. But what I don't want to do is tip this whole thing over on me. It's pretty stable. I still have it slightly snug. So that's splitting the difference. It's showing, zoom in on that again. That's showing us at one now, All right? Can you, is it getting the focus? Sorry, I don't know if that's focused in or not. There you go, kind of. Oh, I missed my manual focus cameras. Okay, so anyways, let's reset this zero. All right, so that's set to zero. Um, just double checking. Yep. Okay, so we'll bring it around to the other side now. Uh, 
and we are still at zero. So we're trammed. Now the fun part. I've got to tighten this thing again. <laughs> May have gone just a hair too far. Oh, wrong way. Okay, so let's do one more check. Yeah, we're at zero, good. Let's just double check. Yep, zero, we're repeating, good. Okay, so now the fun part, right? I have to tighten this 36 millimeter nut in the back without throwing this off tram. So this is the part that I dread because, well, frankly, I don't know if I can do it. But what we're gonna do is just very lightly Up on the wrench. As we go. It's looking pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Get my bald spot in there. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Let's do one last check. It's still reading zero on this side. Good, okay. Let's bring it over to this side. And we are still reading zero. So, Miller's tram. Doesn't take a whole heck of a lot. They sell all these different tools for tramming where you put it in and it's got multiple dial indicators and all this stuff but frankly you know for what I'm doing I'm not like I said I'm not doing you know super precision uh, tool making here but I was off a little bit so I'm glad that I got that fixed and uh, ready to go all right thanks for watching today I do appreciate it um, again just a real quick video um, I'm getting the the, uh, the mill service it's ready to go I'll be cutting some parts here um, in the next day or so uh, again, I can't really lift much. Even lifting the vise to put it on here is technically probably pushing the uh, limits of what I'm supposed to do. Um, we'll call it 9.9 .9 pounds. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's not too bad. And I've got help that uh, people come help me out. But uh, So expect to see some more of the mill uh, running soon. Uh, later, Either later this week or next week. Uh, and I do apologize. There's a little bit, of, uh, a little bit of noise in the background there. But I finally broke down. I'm going to credit James Green on this one. Uh, James, thank you so much uh, for your feedback on this, but uh, I, I went ahead and got a portable air conditioner for the, the shop. Um, in installing it, because I had to actually drill a, a hole and put a vent in, um, I realized that my shop's not, not insulated on three of the walls. So that would be a pretty good reason why it gets so darn hot in here. Uh, so I'll be insulating things and getting things going. Um, it looks like I'm going to be here for a while. But uh, again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, appreciate any comments you have. Uh, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up, like button. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And I will talk to you again soon. Thank you.